Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to tell you uh, one diagrammatic knot invariant, which is called the knot coloring, which is a very, very color colorful approach, obviously, uh, hence the name, um, which came up relatively late in the theory, but, um, well, knots are around for quite a while, so Gauss already studied knots. A um, lot of people before have drawn knots, that's for sure, so Gauss studied braids, maybe that's more appropriate, but really knot theory got started maybe in the 20s of the last century uh, with Reitermeister and Seifert and people like Alexander and so on and so on. And knot coloring is kind of the easiest invariant you can come up with. It's not a perfect invariant, but it's cool and nice to imagine. So let's get started. It will be very, very nice. I promise you, um, I hope at least. <laughs> anyway, so basically the question is always the same. Um, and basically the answer is always also always the same is obviously not. Um, but proving that mathematically is usually a bit tricky, we'll see. So let's say we have a trefoil and the trefoil is really this picture here. It goes under in this case, it goes over, it goes under, it goes over, it goes under, it goes over and done. And on the right hand side, very similarly looking, but not the same. Let's see, it goes over, it goes under, it goes under, it goes over, it goes under, and it goes over. That's the unknot. Um, you can just undo it. You can actually see that you can undo it. You can, homework, uh, just construct them out of rope. And well, you definitely will be able to undo the unknot. Anyway, so someone really built this out of rope and as usually a glue both ends together. That's why you have this little um, sticky patch here. Um, so let's say glue together. Anyway, so the question I would like to answer today is, is a trefoil trivial? Um, and the, the immediate reaction that you should have here is obviously not, I mean, obviously not. I mean, come on, look at this picture. It's, it's no, 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 it's not. It's definitely not. It. But how to prove it is a very different uh, point. So you can prove it by just building it out of rope. And you will convince yourself very quickly that you can't undo this knot here. Uh, as I said, homework, it's a lot of fun. I, I never did it myself, but it's certainly a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, um, um, but not, that's not really a mass proof, right? So you would like to have mass method. So something where you don't need to buy rope if you don't have it, and you could still decide whether the trefoil is trivial or not. And that's the whole point of not invariance. You want to associate, let's say you can associate a number to the trefoil five, and you can associate a number to the unknot uh, six, and five is not six, so the trefoil is not the unknot. Some argument like that, that like, like that, that's what you want to have. And that's what's called a knot invariant. And as I, as I said, I want to show you today the kind of the easiest knot invariant, which is not completely silly. Uh, you could say the knot itself is a knot invariant, but that's not very helpful. Anyway, so the, the easiest not completely silly knot invariant, and it's called the coloring. And it works as follows. It's really, really simple. So we have a rule, and I want to use three colors. I have green, I have blue, and I have red. Uh, why not? You can use any other. So the, the, really, the colors don't matter. But I have three colors, and I have a rule how to color my knot. So at each crossing, I can either it can be either monochromatic, so everything is red, or everything is blue, or everything is green. So that's good. Um, or if it's not monochromatic, you want all three colors to be present. For example, blue, red, and green. And by coloring here, I really mean I color uh, the strengths of the projection. So here I would have my, let me try to draw it. So it goes over, it goes under, it goes over, it goes under, it goes over, it goes under. Um, this is not the perfect picture, but anyway, so this component here is a green colored. It's a component of the projection. Um, the top one is blue and this one here is the way it is. Where is it? Here you go, this is one is red. So I color the components and I would like to do it in such a way that at each crossing, I only see either one color Everything is monochromatic, everything is red, or I see all three colors. And such a projection, if that's possible, the projection is tricolorable, right? With red, green, and blue. Um, if it has such a coloring, the condition two is what I explained here. So those two are good, but for example, these two are bad because as you can see, not all colors are present. And then there's this condition that you would have at least two colors. So um, because you have this condition here, you in principle could just color everything red, but that's a bit boring. So we want to use it, you, uh, at least two colors. And as you can see, the trefoil, here you go, allows such a coloring. So here, for example, we have a green, blue, and red. Here we have a red, a blue, and green. 
And here we have a blue, red, and green. So it's perfect. At each crossing, we see exactly what we want, right? So coloring projections um, with three colors and try to check whether it's possible. That's kind of a zero and one question, a yes or no question. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Okay. And some knots are actually not tricolorable, and that's the whole point. So this is a zero, not, uh, zero one invariant. If it's tricolorable, it spits out one. If it's not tricolorable, it spits out zero. Uh, so you can just decide, okay, if it spits out one, it can't be one of the zero knots. And that's quite of the whole point. So here's the knot, uh, the unknot that is not tricolorable because, why? Because of this condition here, that I need to use at least two colors, but I only have one strand. No, that can't work. So it's not two, th three colorable. A little bit harder to see is that this knot here, which is called the figure eight knot, probably because it looks like a figure eight, I guess. Uh, not quite, but maybe almost. It's also not three colorable. Um, that's a bit harder to see, but you can basically, we only have four arcs anyway. So you can just try all possibilities and you will see that it doesn't work. And the point is, uh, what I should really say up to this point is uh, that a projection is three colorable or not. So the real question here is what, this, what can this tell us about knots and not about projections of knots, right? And it turns out that I don't need to distinguish between projections and not projections because it's a knot invariant. So uh, a knot is three colorable if and only if every of its projections is three colorable if and only if one of its projections is three color, which is pretty cool. So you only need to check one of them. And for example, then you can check the trefoil, which is three colorable, is not the uh, unknot because that one is not three colorable. No? You have a, a zero one knot invariant. Um, so, and it's also not the figure eight knot, but we can't distinguish the unknot and the figure eight knot. So you can still ask whether those two are the same and we can't tell right now. So they might be, they might not be. Obviously, you might say again, obviously, they are not the same. And yes, you can build the right hand, the right hand one out of rope as well. And you can convince yourself that it's not, but that's kind of cheating. We don't want to do that. We want a, a well, a hands on a mathematical number theoretical, whatever, uh, not invariant. And to see that this actually works is really, really simple. And you can write out the proof yourself. The only thing you need to do is you need to go through all the writer master moves, and there are not so many, and just check whatever one side of the writer master moves emits three colors. So here you can see this one emits three colors, then the other one emits three colors as well. So we do it for the writer master two move, for the writer master one move, for the writer master three move. And it works perfectly well. And that's pretty cool. So it's very, very simple proof, a very, very simple concept, and still reasonably powerful. You kind of roughly half of the knots. I don't think there's a precise statement, but I don't, I'm not sure. Let me just uh, say roughly half of the knots are zero, so they're not tricolorable, and roughly half of the knots are one. So uh, they are tricolorable, so you can distinguish roughly 50% of all knots, roughly, whatever that means. Let's not worry about whatever that means. And actually, you can do better. You can do an N coloring. So you can use N colors instead of uh, just three for some odd, odd N. And the only condition you want to have satisfied around each crossing is this one here. So I think of my colors now as being elements of Z mod N. Um, so I just, it's less colorful, but it's kind of the same, right? Instead of using red, blue, and green, I use uh, z here in this case, for example, I use zero, one, and two which I could just think of as being colors as well. And as you can see here around this crossing, this condition is satisfied. So let's have a look, for example, at this one here. Two goes over, so two times two should be congruent to a zero plus one modulo three. And it, indeed it is. So two, plus, two times two is, I guess, four. Well, I hope. And that's one mod three, right? So um, that actually works out pretty well. Okay. Um, and then you can do this in general with elements of Z mod N, and you can ask whether or not it's N colorable. And you get actually a sequence of zero ones, like for three, for five, for seven, for 11, and so on. So you get to sequence of, of zeros and ones associated to a knot. And you can hope that this is actually a good knot environment. Slight problem, it's not perfect. So the left and right handed trefoil. So what's the difference? So here's the trefoil pictures. So one of them goes over down here. It's this part of the picture, and one of them goes under down here, this part of the picture, and then it just alternates. So you kind of flip one crossing, it's also just called a mirror image. So if you take the knot and you hold it, uh, look at the knot in the mirror, 
so I let the lot not be reflected in the mirror, um, you would get the opposite one. So left-handed or the right-handed. I don't know which one is the left-handed and which one is the right-handed. One of them is left-handed, one of them is right-handed. Anyway, it doesn't matter so much. As you can already see here, both of them admit the tri coloring, so we just can't tell them apart. And it's not so easy to decide whether they're actually the same or not. We'll see that. It's kind of my running gag here for a while. That most knot invariants fail to detect these two knots. They are not the same. And that's not completely obvious. But why shouldn't there be some crazy uh, kind of manipulation of the diagram? I mean, in the end, you, end, you can go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Um, but there is none. And proving that is a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky. So it takes a while. Actually, most knot invariants fail and can't detect this property, which is kind of fun. Um, anyway, if you build them out of rope, even if you build them out of rope, it's not completely trivial to decide whether they're actually the same or not. It's not like with a trefoil on the or not. It's, it's more delicate. And they're not the same. And some knot invariants will be able to tell them apart. This one is not one of them. So that's the problem with all knot invariants somehow. No one, no knot invariant is perfect, so you would like to have a, a huge backpack of those knot invariants. Anyway, I hope you liked this colorful video. Keep in mind that coloring is kind of the zero one decision for a knot, and basically you get a whole sequence for them, an infinite sequence, which is a cool knot invariant that you can at least use to distinguish the trefoil from the unknot and the figure eight knot which is better than nothing, right? But you can't distinguish the left-handed and the right-handed are not. Uh, because you run into this problem that every invariant runs into, if the invariant happens to be the same, so not one spits out number five, not two spits out number five, then you can't make any statement. You just can't tell. They could be different, they could be the same, we don't know. If not one spits out number five and not two spits out number six, then they're different. And tricolorable runs into exactly that problem that both both spit out the number one, so um, both are tricolorable for the left and the right-handed trefoil. So we actually can't tell. So right now we can't make a decision. We can't make a call whether left and right-handed trefoil are the same or not. So we need more noise invariants, I guess. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.